What's up, guys? This is a special treat here. We have the first look of the Archer in Crowfall. As you can see here, this is the launcher for Crowfall. It is updating right now. We are going to go into Archetype Testing Ranger, the Archer class. Unfortunately, it says Hide Power is not ready and is disabled for right now. So for those that don't know, this is Crowfall. This is a uh, early, early alpha version of the game. They are just doing combat testing right now. This is not what the game is going to be about. This is kind of like a mini game. Think, uh, it's called the Hunger Dome. Think like the Hunger Games where it's a free-for-all bloodbath where you're trying to kill the opponent's uh, last man standing wins. They set it up into team-based, so I believe it's three or four teams. We haven't played in the Hunger Dome yet either. So this is going to be our first time in here. First time looking at the Ranger class, and yeah, just a good time. In order to get this, you have to spend a, a good chunk of money and pledge to Crowfall on their website, crowfall.com. But it is well worth it, guys. Check out some research. Look at the FAQ on Crowfall. It's going to be a game unlike any others out there because it's a massive MMO RPG that you're used to, but the worlds themselves destroy and die, decay over time. So, meaning that, granted, it sucks when you start late in the MMO and you're always so far behind gear score or, uh, you know, just gear in general or whatever. It's skills and all that things. Levels. There really is no levels in Crowfall. Uh, everyone is roughly the same. You have one essential crow, your soul, and it's account-wide. You passively and a little bit of actively level up skills and choose. So there's different paths and different traits and things that you can select. Some, of course, are going to be better in different combinations. Uh, if you want to be a crafter, you're going to have to level up like crafting skills, and you're going to kind of have to uh, forego combat-type skills and abilities like that. So if you're going to be a high-end crafter, you're not going to be very proficient at weapons and fighting and combat like that. So you can't, you're not going to be a jack-of-all-trades in this game. It's... It's different than most because most games now it's like you can do everything yourself. You can play as a single per, uh, player. You necessarily don't necessarily need a guild. Um, you know you can do anything and everything by yourself. That's one of the big differentiating points in this game is that you're gonna need other players to work together. You have to build relations and you know form strong lasting alliances with other members that have done different type of uh, archetypes and are different type of builds. So, you know, if you're a crafter or if you're, like, a merchant-style player, you're going to need to make friends with players that are actually, you know, like, hunters, uh, fighters, you know, protectors, guardians. And you're going to have to have some sort of alliance, allegiance, some agreements with them so that they can protect you in-game. Same thing if you're a gatherer slash harvester. If you're really into that stuff, uh, you're going to have to be kind of, like, bodyguarded, protected for the most part. Because monsters could kill you, you know, sure, you're going to have combat skills and such, but you're not going to be as efficient as, say, a real just, like, badass Templar that's went all straight attack and offense. So these are the things that make Crowfall different. It's all completely player-run economy. And, again, the worlds, the campaign worlds are a massive world that will destroy as time goes on. It gets more intense, so they want it to be similar to, like, The Walking Dead, where there's you know, uh, massive corruption, uh, you know, zombies or hordes or undead creatures that are out in the wild, in the worlds, that get more aggressive and more fierce as time goes on. So they develop what they call uh, the hunger. Oh, we can't log in right now. So yeah, so they develop like the hunger, and they get more insane and more intense as time goes on. And... With that being said, at the end, there's a let, set period of time. So it's, the campaign may last one month, maybe last two months, maybe last six months, maybe a year. And you're able to jump into these campaigns. They all have different rule sets, different uh, objectives, different you know scenarios. So most of them are going to be where you start off with no gear whatsoever. Most of the campaigns, they've said, are going to be where, again, everyone is on a completely even playing field except for the potential passive skills that you've leveled up over time. There will be a little bit of advantage, but they do say that they are skewing the skill progression to very, very you know, dramatic early on, the first you know couple days or months. We don't know exact time period, but the very beginning is that's where you're going to get most of your powers. So, of course, someone who's just starting out day one is going to be 
weaker than someone who's been playing for six months because of the passive skills. But once they've played for, say, maybe five days and got their basic, uh, you know, skills and archetypes set up, then they're going to be roughly on the same playing foot as someone that's played six months. Granted, the six-month player will have different, uh, different access to different skills and abilities and things like that. But generally, the power is going to be approximately the same. And going into a match where your gear it has to be crafted in-game or forged in-game, that is going to make it a way balanced level playing field. So granted, again, the person that's been playing six months is going to have uh, friends and uh, guildmates or buddies or people that he's got deals and commerce with that is going to provide him gear. And so he's already going to have those relationships that are going to help him. But a brand new player will be able to compete pretty much evenly with an old player. Uh, there is not going to be pay to win in this game because of that import slash export system where you can't really bring things into the matches. It's going to be almost like a MOBA style where starting off, everyone is pretty much the same. And it just goes on based how you play your character, how you progress your character, what items you find, you know, how much farming you do, because you're going to have to farm for some mats. So, of course, since no one has anything, you're going to have to go get, like, wood and logs if you're an archer so you can build your bow, craft your bow, craft your arrows, and gather those materials. That is pretty cool. That's going to draw in a lot of players that normally don't go to MMOs because I know how I am. If I start an MMO, I want to start day one or even early access because otherwise you have that feeling of, I'm left behind. I'm, you know, six months behind people. That's the reason I never played World of Warcraft is because when people were talking about it and my friends were playing it, it was like five years into World of Warcraft's life. And I'm like, hell no, I'm not playing it in World of Warcraft, a game that's been around for five years. And being, you know, a level one, when you got level 70s or level 80s, whatever the cap was at the time, and having five-year progression on me in a game that is, and, you know, arena-based, PvP-based, uh, that kind of stuff, like gear-based. No, I don't want to play a game and be that gimped that far behind other players. It That deters a lot of people uh, into playing, you know, games like World of Warcraft, in my opinion. So we'll bring back combat here once the servers get up and running. As you can see, it's attempting to log in. 